Welcome on in, welcome on in, welcome on in, guys. I am live from Chicago on this Friday morning. Um, I'm in Chicago for BlockCon with New Kids on the Block and KOTB. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be seeing Donnie, Jordan, Danny, Joey, and John in just a little bit for our rehearsals for this weekend. But um, yeah, I'm in Chicago for the next week and a half, so I'm missing little baby Sky. But I'm recording live from my hotel room right now. So this isn't our normal background. This isn't our normal setting. But we're working with it, right? Hopefully you guys had a good a good week. Hopefully you've watched the Vanderpump Rules reunion by now. Hopefully you've watched um, Ariana on Call Her Daddy. It's been quite an eventful Pump Rules week that we're going to break down today. So um, what other updates should I, should I keep you posted on? I, well, I'm going to be here, so I'll be taping live from here. So our live schedule may be a little wonky. I'm trying to make sure we have at least another, a good, solid Wi-Fi connection. Um, but we'll we'll work through it. But shall we dive into this week's Pump Rolls reunion? Because my God, was it juicy. There was so much that was going on. Um, I need an extra little sip of my coffee. It was kind of hot, so I haven't. Mm. Sound of a bitch that's hot. Okay. Apologies, apologies, apologies. Um, okay, so we open up the reunion, and we have the solo interviews with Andy, Ariana, and Raquel. We don't really see much for Raquel, and we kind of just, like, touch the surface with Ariana and Tom about, like, how the scandal broke, how they found out, right? Tom looks super casual, which I was like, this is your moment of redemption. We're going to look casual. Like, we're going to try to go, like, what, you won't be able to convince that Ariana was beating you, and so we're just going to go super cash. Ariana's dress wasn't my favorite. She did look hot. Hair and makeup looked incredible. The dress, I, it's always really hard to pull off like the nude fabric um, because it just looks like nude fabric. So it wasn't my favorite look on her, especially like in that lighting and in that setting, but she did look incredible. I will say that. Raquel looked like she was going on a job interview. I don't, we don't see much of her. We kind of just like see her sit down and be like, hi, Andy. And then it teases like that she's going to be coming out later into the reunion, which fine, whatever. I kind of feel like we're wrapping up Raquel's storyline, right? Like I don't see how we bring her back for next season, especially since like we've really reduced her in this reunion. Well, last season's reunion, we kind of like showed her driving off into the distance with her dad. So it was a little shocking that she came back for the following season, probably not with the full time contract, probably with like a Charlie contract. And then it's like, okay, well, let's see. Do we phase you out? Do we kind of keep you in? Poor Charlie kind of just gets jerked around. I'm not a big Charlie fan, but I think they jerk her around. When it comes to Raquel, though, it does kind of feel like she's really cemented her place outside of the group. Like, I don't know anybody that would be willing to talk to her outside of Schwartz and Sandoval. And I feel like even Schwartz and Sandoval are kind of on the rocks with the group. So that's going to take a minute for them to repair things. And now they're not even together. So Tom's denied dating that one girl, Carly. He says that he's single. We really don't know what's going on with Raquel. Ariana denies that the pregnancy rumor, she doesn't think that the pregnancy rumors are true. And Raquel's rep has come out and denied that Raquel is even pregnant. But back to the reunion. So we see the text that Ariana sent to Raquel after she apologized, which is 48 hours after Ariana found out about the affair that Tom and Raquel were having. And it was basically like an uh, Adriana from Real Houses in Miami, my bad sort of text message, which to me was a little insulting. It's like, how do you, well, actually, what? up the damn text message because I remember when Raquel did her TMZ interview right and she was like I reached out to Ariana and I tried to apologize to her and we've spoken and um you know it wasn't well received and then now we get further context and details that when they spoke it was the night that Ariana found out and she got on the phone with her and they were going back and forth and Sheena was involved and Sandoval was involved and everybody was yelling and it was big hot chaos right that was I talked to Ariana so spin that we told TMC because she didn't really talk to Ariana. Ariana approached her and then like she was Bambi eyed and like caught in a corner and didn't know what to say. Then we get to the text message where she's like, yeah, I text her and I apologize. And it wasn't very well received. Well, it wasn't very well received because it was a very stupid text message that she sent her. Here, let's read it. I'm watching that. I have the TMC interview pulled up. Because she's like, I apologize to her. And I don't, I'm not going to tell you what she said back because it wasn't very nice. 
And so the text message was, Ariana, I don't know what to say right now besides I really fucked up and I'm so, so sorry. And then Ariana said, shut the F up, you effing rat. I don't know why we keep calling her a rat. Um, Because rats sleep with the fishes and like rats rat on people. But I don't hate it. I I think that was a stupid text message to send. I'm so, so sorry. I fucked up. No, you need to like grovel. You need to beg for mercy. You need to really talk about how bad this was and how horrible you are and you didn't mean to hurt them and I don't know, something other. Like you need to like really get on your knees and like beg for forgiveness. My bad is not the way to go. So Ariana calling her a rat? Sure, call her a rat. I would call her other names too. But Ariana says that she had zero suspicion that anything was going on because she trusted her man. She's like, so when he tells me he's going to be somewhere, I gave him the benefit of the doubt of trusting him because we've been in a long-term relationship. Now, I know some people are going to be like, "Mm, well, you know, she knew that Tom was a cheater because, you know, he lied about not being with Kristen when he was making out with her. And then we have Miami Girl. And so Tom wasn't the most trustworthy. But it's like, I guess that's a question for all the ladies in the audience out there right now. I mean, do you, if your man has shown little snippets of maybe not being the most faithful, but you've been together and you're committed, like being in that situation, the situation that she's in, do you believe him? Do you give him the benefit of the doubt? She's like, I trusted him. He was my man and I trusted him. Tom says that the affair was on pause after the first break, or sorry, after the first hookup on boys night, or I guess it was it's unclear. Okay, so the timeline keeps getting mixed up because people are, it was originally they were saying that it happened the night of boys' night and then no, it didn't happen the night of boys' night. They connected the night of boys' night and then the hookup happened in a hot tub a couple days later. Um, so the timeline is still murky because I feel like Tom's story and Schwartz's story and I guess Raquel's story, we haven't really heard what her story is, but it keeps changing and it keeps shifting, which to me, I, I can't keep up with it. But Apparently, after the initial hookup, there was a break, it was paused, and then it picked back up again in September. So, if that's true, timeline-wise, it w- it was barely a month. So, oops, we hooked up, and then a month later, we didn't feel as bad, and we decided to keep up the affair. Got it. Cool. Thanks for the clarification. Tom said that he felt like Ariana's gay BFF, but that... Uh, They hid their relationship from the rest of the cast and from the cameras because they were trying to protect each other or protect their relationship. I don't really know what he means by gay BFF. Is it because he, like, likes to wear nail polish and suck dick? Like, I'm a little confused as to what her gay BFF actually means because she already had a gay BFF. Doesn't she have Logan? So why would she need Sandoval? And why would she be fucking her gay BFF? Why would you want to screw her if you're just her gay BFF? I don't know. Weird comment to make. Um... Yeah, I don't get it, but whatever. Ariana says that she showed everything, but that Tom says that they hid their lives, which is interesting because that's a juxtaposition. And there's even this audio clip that they play about Tom saying that it's not fair to the rest of the cast, that they're hiding things. But Ariana's like, from my perspective, I always shared everything. I always put everything out there. There wasn't anything that I was trying to to hide. But she thinks that Tom has to say this now because he has to cover his tracks. So they have very different versions of their relationship, which says that their relationship is on very different terms. Then we finally get to the cast. We see them all walk out. Um, It's interesting to see them face each other for the first time. We see uh, Andy ask Ariana about the living situation and about Tom Sandoval still being in the house. Lala compares him to Randall. Uh, Lisa defends Sandoval. I'm like, she needs to stop defending him. Like, Lisa... Like, I get it when they, I don't know. I feel like she's always defended them. So this is very true to Lisa and her loyalty to the cast and to all of them for the most part. But I don't know. I mean, I guess Lisa does have a point because Lala is saying that Sandoval and Randall are the same, are two very different things. Because if you watch the Randall documentary, which we recapped on the podcast, we did a live on Tuesday night on YouTube and then recapped it on the podcast on Wednesday. If you watch that, My takeaways from the Randall Scandal documentary are that he was a jerk. He was just like a jerk of a producer in Hollywood. He was not nice to his assistants. He, you know, spoke to them very poorly, uh, liked to spend more than he was bringing in, which is a lot of people, Uh, you know, being abusive towards your assistant and speaking to them poorly. Unfortunately, that's just a standard here in L.A. Um, I'm not defending him. I'm not saying that it's right, but it's not a unique story is, I guess, what I'm trying to say. 
Um, from what I know, Tom doesn't talk to his assistants like that. I mean, they buy him pens. They make sure that his house is fully stocked with paper towels and toilet paper and batteries. I mean, what would he do without the batteries? What would he do without them? He would have no batteries. There'd be no batteries for the remote. So I don't see Tom as abusive towards the people that work for him the same way I saw Randall as abusive towards the people that work for him. Spending beyond your means. I don't think Sandoval spends beyond... Well, I mean, I guess we saw him with Schwartz and Sandys, but I guess it's comparison to, like, the way that they can lie. And I guess that's what Lala's meaning is. Like, the way that they're so deceptive and the way that they can lie to you, because she even tells Lisa. She's like, the way he slept next to Ariana in their bed, knowing that he was having a full-on affair, like, that is sick and twisted, and that is a dangerous person. Yes and no. I mean, I guess... Somebody that's capable of that level of deception and that level of betrayal, yes, can be dangerous. But I think that is a big blanket statement um, that doesn't fully hit. And I do love Lala. But also we have to find out, like, what is it about Randall that made him so dangerous? Aside from being a jerk, aside from being gross, aside from being misogynistic and using inappropriate slurs, you know, aside from just being... A nasty person like what made him so dangerous like we've heard about the amber childers restraining order we've heard about the fbi investigation which has been denied so i don't den- i'm not denying lala's account i'm just saying we have yet to see what makes randall so dangerous we see that like you know the bruce willis stuff was sad when we watched the documentary and we see that he was really pushing bruce willis to um act when he was clearly not you know, he wasn't all there. His his memory was going. His brain was deteriorating, which is unfortunate. His cognitive function was starting to decline. So, again, it makes Randall a jerk and a bad dude. But I am very curious because Lala seems to allude to there are a lot worse things that Randall has done or said. So, and I, but also curious about how that relates to Sandoval and what we know about Sandoval cheating on his girlfriend. He's a serial cheater. He's a young dude. He has Peter Pan syndrome. You know, he he doesn't know when to grow up. He's still making the same mistakes he was making 20 years ago. So in that sense, I don't know if the comparison between Tom and Randall fully landed for me. James is pissed because it looks like he feels hurt and betrayed by Tom, who was, in James's eyes, a very good friend, friend of his. Tom seems very dismissive of their friendship. And it's like, you've had the same haircut for nine years, which I don't know what that has to do with with anything but and then we get the you're warm with the mustache and james freaking out and then sandoval being like i'll beat you up and so they like exchange words and andy loses all his cards that was listen i think james is great i think james shined in this reunion because he really delivered some solid funny lines he um he put he held sandoval accountable some people are either like anti Lala and James and they're like we don't like Lala and James they went too hard they're giving Sandoval more fans and then other people are like yes rallying for Lala and James I think I'm in the yes rallying for Lala and James category I understand the hypocrisy in their actions but I just think the the depth and the level of betrayal that Sandoval exhibited in what he did with Raquel was a lot deeper and a lot worse and a lot more insidious compared to the others so I think They have a sense of entitlement because, yes, they've made those mistakes and they've been crucified for them repeatedly. And now we have Sandoval, who's always been the morally superior one. And now he's in the hot seat and it's time for him to get grilled. And, yeah, they're going to come hard at him because he was acting like he was such an upstanding citizen and such a great dude. Right. So I get where they're coming from. Um. Then we get to Schwartz, and Schwartz says that Tom told him about the affair in August, and then Sandy Balls is, is all like, what? I didn't I didn't tell you until January. I don't know what you're talking about, which I believe is a lie. I think Schwartz did find out in August, shortly after the affair, and Sandoval just was trying to keep his timeline straight because he didn't want to make it seem as bad, but now it makes, it, look him, it makes him look even worse because then they flash back to his interview with Andy where he says he told Schwartz in January, and that was like the original stories that Schwartz didn't find out until January, and everybody was like, hmm, we have questions. Uh, he says that pushing Raquel and Schwartz was not a decoy, that he was trying to end things with Raquel, and he was kind of like, go, Raquel, and I guess that was kind of like a cock block for him, which I feel like he's also denied so his story just keeps changing and evolving and i can't keep up with it sandy balls ariana admits to knowing about miami girl but she says that 
they technically weren't exclusive at that point, that they were dating and that they were together when he slept with Miami Girl. Which makes me think, is this true? Were they really non-exclusive? Or was that just something Sandoval used to defend himself? To be like, oh, well, Ariana, like, remember, we're not exclusive. So I did sleep with everybody else, but like, oh, Ariana. He has his Napoleon dying in my voice. Like, come on, dude. Like, you know, we weren't, like, technically together. You know? Like, God, you know, I think you're so cool and you're so rad. And, like, I just think you're so fucking sexy. And, like, you know, we have, like, wild hot sex and we chill and we have mushrooms. But, like, come on. You know we weren't exclusive at that point. But, like, if I could choose, if you told me that we were exclusive, I would have never banged that Miami chick. She doesn't even mean anything to me. I don't even like her. I don't even like Miami chicks. I don't even like Miami. I like you, dude. You're, like, so fucking cool. And, like, Kristen, like, why would I ever want to be with Kristen? She's banging James. God. And so I can see how he maybe manipulated her or, like, put his little spin on it to convince her that they technically weren't exclusive. And him being like, well, we technically didn't have a conversation about being exclusive. Even though I led you to believe that we were exclusive, we weren't technically exclusive. So then in her mind, she's like, okay, well, then it makes sense why he slept with Miami Girl because we weren't technically exclusive. But now we can be technically exclusive, right? And so I guess from that point forward, they were technically exclusive. But she said that she defended him because she wanted to see the best in him and she didn't want him to be exposed as this cheater when that's not how she saw him and that's not what was reflective of the person that she knew. Andy then does call out the hypocrisy between the cast and Lala chimes in and she clarifies that none of them hooked up with their best friend's man, which is true. The I mean... Kristen did, but I just, I think the situation, like, yes, they've all done bad things, and yes, there's all been cheating, but again, I just feel like the level and the depth of this scandal is way bigger and cuts way deeper. We get into the friend Joe, who Schwartz explains was more like a friend with benefits rather than a full-on girlfriend, and then Katie calls Joe a creep, and then Schwartz, you know, goes all bravo, bravo, bravo. He threatens to send a cease and desist if she doesn't stop talking about Joe, who Katie does not like Joe. And apparently Joe cut off Kristen Doty and blocked Kristen Doty when she started dating Schwartz or like sleeping with Schwartz because they're friends with benefits. Weird. Then we find out about this trip to Big Bear, which Joe, Schwartz, Tom, and Raquel all went on without Ariana, which they insist was not a double date. And Ariana's like, well, why wasn't I invited? And they're like, you just went around, man. Like, God, you were just like grieving. Like your grandma just died and like Charlotte had just died. And, like I wanted to give you space. So we figured I'd give you some time alone while I was banging Raquel. And then James reveals that Raquel hates snowboarding. So why was she even there? Because she loved riding Sandy's dick more than she wanted to ride the snowboard. Lisa reveals that she gave them back their initial interest in Tom Tom so that they had money for Schwartz and Sandy's when Schwartz and Sandy's first opened. And that they got their money back, but then she's like, but they're still my partners. Like, what do you want me to do? Like, break up with them. They're my partners. So that, to me, was kind of strange that they're technically still her partners, but at the same time, she gave them their money back. Wouldn't that be like buying them out? And then they only they said it was only 50000 50, and she was like, yeah, 50000 each. So that's unclear. It's unclear. It wasn't entirely mapped out of whether or not they're still partners in TomTom, Tom. Or if they took out their money, like, I didn't know, like, was it a loan? It sounded from me when she pitched it to them on the show that she was buying them out of the restaurant and was like, I will give you your money back. You give me your 5% and then you guys go run Schwartz and Sandy's. So I'm still confused as to how she's technically still partners with them because she said that she was still partners with them. And then we have Ariana and Ariana's like, I don't know how I feel about that. That's weird. You being friends with with the Toms, but you know what's best for you. You know what's best for your business. I'm not going to tell you what to do. We just won't be as close, Lisa. And Lisa's like, okay, well, I don't need to be as close to you. I just need you to film Vanderpump Rules, darling. And then we finally get to see Sheena speak. And she talks about making up with Lala and that she feel, she says she feels awful about negating Katie's feelings regarding Raquel and Schwartz. But it was only because she was going off of what Raquel was telling her about Katie and how Katie was being mean to her. And Ariana and Sheena seemed to agree that, like, Raquel was painting a very different picture. 
And then Sheena's like, in retrospect, I feel awful. I wish I didn't encourage that. I was, I believed Raquel. And I, I thought that this was like back in the day where it felt like you were bullying me. And I thought that that's what was going on is it was another mean girl situation. But then Sandoval chimes in about how aggressive Lala is. And then Lisa chimes in defending Sandoval yet again. And then she's like, I'm not defending him. But Tom's like, she's being reasonable, Lala. She's being reasonable. It's like, yeah, you think she's being reasonable because she's defending you. And Lisa is defending him. And listen, I get it. She's defending him because everybody else is on him and she feels bad for him. But I don't know. Like, I get her defending him, but I don't get it at the same time. And that's kind of where we leave off. And then we preview next week. Next week is when I think we get into the restraining order stuff with Sheena. So there's going to be a lot more Sheena in part two. And then next week, I believe, is when we introduce Raquel. And I think it's going to be left on a to be continued. I'm pretty sure... Part two, we're going to have a lot of Sheena through most of it. And then towards the end of part two, I'm predicting that we have Raquel come out and then she comes out and sits down. She's like, hi, Andy. And then it's going to be like a to be continued until part three. And Raquel's really going to be the the prominent focus of part three. But I think in part two, that's where we're going to get Raquel's one-on-one with Andy or at least a little bit more of it. But I think the second tier, the second half of the reunion is really where we're going to get more of Raquel. So... Um, Peacock released re- sorry, Peacock released an extended version of the reunion and an uncensored version of the reunion, which I thought was really good. And I was very happy with the Peacock version more than I was with the Bravo version. So I would recommend people, I mean, watch both because you get to watch it live and then you get to watch more juicy details. But the Peacock version was a full hour where, so I guess we get what, like 10 to 15 minutes ish of additional footage. And it's really just more context. The Kristen stuff comes up and about how Tom said the exact same things to Ariana and Kristen back in the day that he was saying to Raquel and Ariana now. His story, like they played uh, clips from back then compared to what he's saying clips now. And that I think was really telling. And it shows that like this is just a pattern of his and that, you know, it's hard to believe him when he was legitimately saying the exact same things. So that I thought was interesting because we get more context into the Kristen stuff. Uh, we get raw cast reactions from uh, Katie and Tom's divorce. They get more into that. So we see more of their split and it's less scandal. It's less scandal because we get more of their divorce. Sheena reveals that Tom told Raquel at Coachella that he and Ariana were in an open relationship. Tom Sandoval is denying that, but apparently that's what Raquel is saying, is that she was told that they were in an open relationship when they were at Coachella, which was last year, which was technically before the affair was supposed to have started, because Coachella was, what, April of 2022? And then the affair technically didn't start until August, or the hookup happened in August and then the affair started in September so maybe Raquel thought that it would be okay well I don't know but then at some point you learn that they're not in an open relationship and then like how do you keep going how do you film that finale and then keep and then go to Big Bear like it was just they filmed the the finale at the something about her sandwich tasting and then she still went on a trip a double date trip with Joe and Schwartz to Big Bear for the weekend to go snowboarding when she doesn't like to snowboard it's just wild um so yeah i thought it was it was a good extended version i like that the cuts hit a lot deeper because it's uncensored so you also get to really hear them curse and drop the f-bombs and so when they're throwing those you know those hits at each other i feel like they cut a lot deeper because you can actually hear them uncensored so i enjoy i think bravo needs to always do an extended uncensored version of the reunions because i think it's good if you haven't watched the extended uncensored version I highly recommend that you should because it was good. It was good, 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 good. Okay. Um, Okay. I just wanted to remind you guys while we're on the topic of the reunion and Lala's a hot topic, she's going to be with me at the Bourbon Room in Hollywood on June 15th for my 30th birthday. Tickets are selling fast. We literally only have a very select, I think we only have nine ultra VIP tickets left for that show and then just a handful of... um, GA tickets and then we have live stream tickets so if you're not in Los Angeles but you do want to watch the show online you can definitely uh, get a live stream ticket they're only $4.99 it's brought to you by my pals at Chomps you know I love Chomps they're my favorite protein sticks so shout out to Chomps 
always go to chomps.com to check them out and order. But they are hooking up the live stream for everybody that is international or just not local to LA. So you can get your tickets at nofilterlive.com. I'm also going to be doing a New York show with the Brav Bros in NYC at City Winery on July 26th. So don't forget to get your tickets to that as well. So nofilterlive.com. But the Bourbon Room show is going to be fun. It's my 30th birthday, so we're going to have a blast. I'm going to have Lala Kent there. We have a lot of other special guests that are coming out. So stay tuned. Get ready. It's going to be a fun time.